Hi, I'm John McCarthy, and I want to talk to you a little bit about how our dally wraps affect uh, the head and side of the game. When we quantify value of our dally wraps, everybody always wants to ask me, how many steers will it last? It's one of those questions that really you can't, you can't really definitively answer. Um, different scenarios, different cattle, different types of ropes, three strand to five strand, wax cleaned off, not cleaned off. There's a lot of variables that, that attribute to the length and the life of a wrap. However, when we talk about the overall value of this when it comes to the headers, I want to talk about two things. One, safety. Two, rope savings. Three, more earnings in the jackpot arena. On the safety side of things for a header, you know, it's, it's a little bit different than a healer. We always hear about the horrible stories about a healer getting his thumb cut off or a pinky cut off. And recently at the 2011 USTRC finals, you know, a guy walked by the booth with his pinky hanging, hanging like this, way to the emergency room. Another guy got all of his fingers cut off. You hear about horrible accidents all the time, but not as much for headers. Um, some of the accidents we hear about from headers maybe aren't as gruesome uh, as getting all of your fingers sawed off. However, it does happen um, to headers. Um, this base of our left horn, this area that's sealed right here, if for no other reason that you wanted to be a safer roper or you wanted your kids to be safer roping, the way it seals the base of the saddle horn and keeps a rope from going up underneath it is huge. It's worth three times what, or ten times or a hundred times more than what this wrap is valued at. Um, the header's going to get a heavy steer every now and then. Um, the header's going to get the base of the horn, the tube, if they're using tube rubber or any type of bands for that matter, or a bunch of spun around straps. Anything you use is going to get worn here in this area and that rope's going to eventually suck underneath. Uh, most people that have roped for a while have had to jerk their rope out from underneath their rubber a time or two. Um, I've been roping for several years and I, I could probably think of four or five incidents that really stick out in my mind where people have had to jump over the arena fences and run into the competition pen and cut somebody free because their rope sucked up underneath, they couldn't get their rope out, they end up in a wreck and they just can't get free. This type of a system right here, that wreck never would have happened that lost chance at earnings would have never happened. And so when you're talking about safety for headers, maybe it's we're not avoiding as, as gruesome of accidents as a healer, but it's just huge. It's huge being safe when we're team roping. Um, two customer stories I wanna, wanna share with you when it comes to the head side, and both of them are headers. One is a, is a guy that lives not too far from us who used our dally wraps, um, and uh, he'd just wait to meet up with me to buy a dally wrap. He wouldn't go to the local store and get it. He'd just wait to meet up with me and buy it. Well, he had wore his dally wrap plum out and happened to go buy a local rope company near us to, to buy some ropes. And at that point in time, bought some of their, their wrap, their bands that they sell, and wrapped a saddle horn with him. Well, he went to a roping. He'd had a full dally and was holding it right here. Steer got heavy, sucked his rope underneath those bands, and ran. And it's kind of like if you imagine a, a tire going on a rim. When they start getting that tire on that rim, it starts going around. And once it goes underneath, it just pops. It goes right over the rim. Well, when your head rope sucks underneath and goes underneath, it tends to continue to follow that path. Well, he was holding it right here. The rope sucked up underneath, went right across, and clipped off the tips of all of his fingers. Just snipped them off as the rope went underneath the, the, the rubber bands he had on his horn. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, that could have totally been avoided if he had had a sealed base of his horn. He'd still have his fingertips today. Another story I want to share with you is uh, Al from Hot Heels. Most of you know him, that they manufacture the Hot Heels roping machine. He'd been using his dally wrap he'd gotten for about a week or two, and he shared with me a story um, that really hit home. It's, it's so many of us have been in, in almost near accidents. Well, he was at a practice pen and roped a heavy steer, dallied, and this was on tube rubber. His rope got sucked underneath the saddle horn, and he was trying to undow and couldn't get his rope out from underneath this tube rubber. This is a grown, big man. Uh, we're not talking about kids or teenagers or ladies or anything else that aren't near strong. He's a big guy. Could not get his rope jerked out from underneath. The steer slowed down, went behind his horse, pushed his foot into the horse's flank. He was trying to get his, his foot off this horse. He leaned forward, and the only thing they can figure is the horse came up with his head, hit him in the head, um, Needless to say, he got knocked off his horse, totally unconscious. He woke up in the hospital. Not a PBR is knocked out for 30 seconds on the ground, kind of knock out, and then they come to. He woke up in the hospital. Um, and the time they're waiting for the ambulance and everything else to get there to take this guy to the hospital, they had to rope his horse, rope the steer, cut the rope between the two of them, because even with him not even on the horse, not holding it, this, this horse was going crazy. He's dragging a steer around the arena. And he said to me, he says, you know what, John? He says, that 
seal on the base of your saddle horn with your dally wraps, I wouldn't have been in that wreck. I would have just simply undallied and let the steer go. And he said, but after my insurance and everything else, he says I was out 2300 bucks. Um, and basically, that dollar wrap would have prevented that from happening. So anyways, when we quantify the value of the wrap, again, safety is a main point. Um, and obviously, a couple of uh, accidents I've mentioned to you here that could have been prevented with just a seal on the left side of the saddle horn. So again, when we value the wrap, safety to me on the head side should be number one to think about. Um, now let's go ahead and let's talk about the value of the wrap when it comes to savings on the ropes. We all know that ropes have gotten super expensive the last 5-10 years. Um, where they used to be $20, $21, now everything seems to be from $35 on up to $40 or mid-40s. So we're all paying a bunch for our ropes. Um, this material that we've got right here and all of our wraps will not destroy the coils of your ropes like uh, bands or tube rubber will. And I say bands or tube rubber because all band material or things that are sold in straps or strips or pieces, there's knockoffs out there now. Um, anything that doesn't have the patented design that we have here is going to get that rope eventually sucked underneath. And so even if the material itself isn't destroying the rope, um, think about uh, how you might handle your rope in an arena. You've got a steer running into the strip and shoot. Your rope is going around. You hustle your horse up there to make sure that rope doesn't get drug across a sharp corner. You know, we know it breaks the spine of a rope and it's going to ruin a brand new rope if that steer hits a hard turn around a sharp corner. And I'd ask you, um, what's the difference between that and a rope getting sucked underneath your bands and running across the steel post that comes out of the top of your saddle swell? It's a sharp edge, goes underneath, runs across that steel, and it breaks the spine of the rope or wears out those coils of a rope. So. Um, this right here is going to prevent your rope from ever going underneath your saddle horn. So one, it's going to save the spine of the rope, keep it coiling up better and everything else. It's not going to break it down. But secondly, it's not going to build up at all in the rope. Our rubber products do not destroy ropes. Um, you look at tube rubber and all these other uh, types of bands out there. They burn down, melt down, fill the crowns of the rope. The rope then doesn't grab as good, starts to slide. Um, becomes a safety factor again, um, becomes less effective, and we end up buying a new rope probably 50% sooner than we should have. So if we were conservatively to say this is increases the life of your rope by 35, 40%, by the time you've went out and you've roped enough to wear out a couple head ropes, you've paid for this thing hands down and probably then some. So keep in mind when you're trying to justify the purchase of a dollar app versus saying you can get something that's free, a tube rubber, whatever you're using, Understand that this will pay for itself just in the savings of your ropes alone. Um, and I've got guys that literally, I've got a couple guys that are really super high numbered guys, are sponsored by rope companies, get all their ropes for free. And one in particular gentleman would get 12, does get 12 ropes a month. And he was always, always trying to wait for that last couple days of the month, trying to make them last to where he could go ahead and get his order in again for the next month so he'd get his 12 free ropes. Now, mind you, we're we're talking 12 a month. So he's going through one every other day. Um, he now, like the other day I was talking to him and he said when he opened his rope bag at the end of the month, he's getting his new order in, he had four ropes laying in there that he had never even took the ties off of, never even opened yet, let alone broke in to use. And so you look at that as we go around to a rope and then say over a year's time, say it saves me 20 ropes. Well, 20 times 40 is 800. Um, $800 would buy a whole lot of dally wraps. I mean, a bunch of them. And so when people talk about, I'd rather use something that's free, truly, if this saves you the price of one rope, it becomes free. Wrap runs about around, around 40 bucks, same price as a rope. So when we talk about the value of this and why you should own one, I think hands down, starting right out of the box, safety is number one. Two would be the value of it, the fact that you will never pay for it if you use these because it will save your rope so much that you'll be buying less ropes, which will in turn make this put money back in your pocket. If it saves you three ropes, this thing costs you 40 bucks, now it saves you $80 on ropes. That's a positive cash return. So anyways, that's what I want to talk to you about when it comes to the value of the ropes. Now third, I want to talk about how it makes you money in the competition pen. Um, headers, you know, our main goal is to set up that shot, give a healer a high percentage look at those back feet, and we need that healer to catch all three or four head if we're going to get a check at the end of the day. So we can, you know, not break the barrier, we can keep our width, we can keep the right height, we can rope them, set them, do everything great, but if the healer doesn't catch all, all of our steers come the end of the day, a lot of times we're not getting a check. So 
when I talk about the value of this thing when it comes to the competition pin, and I think that it makes me thousands of dollars more a year than any kind of band rubber ever possibly could, I'm saying that because when my healers are catching a 15 or 20 percent you know, higher percentage of two feet than the next guy, and the only difference between the two of us is what we've got on our saddle horn, I think that's significant. I think it's huge. And why that happens is it's here on the base of this horn where this is sealed, a rope never gets sucked underneath. And if it never gets sucked underneath, it doesn't run that one or two foot unintentionally that we don't want it to do. And secondly, we'll jump back to the savings on the ropes, if it does suck underneath and run one or two foot, not only did it cost us uh, on the handle of our steer, but it also ruined the rope. But on the, on, the, on the back end of things, since I head and heel, when I'm going down the pen as a healer, and I'm looking at my steer, and I've got him timed. I'm a low number healer here, so you know I'm, I'm timing him at the second I leave the box, right there, right there, right there, right there. And if that header picks that steer up, moves him through the corner, and I can just ride through the corner in that same time, timing there, 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 scoop up, rope the feet, and dally, I look a lot better than what I am. But that's because my header didn't throw me out of time in the corner. Now, you're open behind a guy that's got any kind of bands, and that rope sucks up underneath, bands are strips, I should say, and it sucks up underneath, and it slips one or two feet. Now that steer's timing has just changed in the corner. And people say, well, you know, maybe it could change going across the pin. And I'm like, well, normally it changes in the corner. Head rope's got three to four foot of stretch in it. As a header, we rope them, we dally, we set the steer. The, the stretch in the rope's now exhausted. The steer picks up, starts to move with us. That right there, physics will tell you, that is the heaviest point of that steer on that run. And that's usually when your, your rope would fail. Well, if we're starting into the corner and we've already got time and we've got position, Nine times out of ten or more, what is a, a mid-number healer going to do? And that steer's right there. Even though we just threw him out of time by giving up two foot of rope to him. Healer's going to try to make it fit, take that shot. Low percentage shot, either a miss, a leg. And every once in a while, they're going to catch two feet. But it's not going to happen as often as if the steer was in time all the way through the corner. So this right here, keeping the rope up on top of the rubber all the time, making your rope work up here versus underneath where you've actually got control of the rope, you want to give some rope, you just don't go all the way around the horn of dally. You give a little rope and then finish your dally. So you can massage strong cattle, but again, it'll never suck underneath. So um, that being said, obviously the value of this thing to a header and competition is ginormous. Um, keeps his rope up here, his healer catches all four feet, maybe they're you know, three or four or five or ten seconds, you know, quicker because of it, uh, that amounts to thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars to your mid-numbered jackpot roper who competes all the time. So safety is number one, hands down, there's no reason not one soul on this earth should not have this on their saddle horn making their experience safer. Two, the value of it, it's paid for just in the savings of your ropes. Three, it's going to make you more money as a header in the jackpot pen. Your, head, your healer's going to love you because when your cows aren't leaking back to them and leaving that healer high and having to wait that steer out to leave, um, having to change his timing, he's going to catch more. He's going to love you. He's going to love roping behind you. So it's going to make you a lot more money in, in the roping pen. So if you're asking yourself as a header, why should I buy this wrap, I hope those three areas right there solidify any questions you'd have, any doubts or reasons why you wouldn't want to own one of the wraps. I mean, there's just no reason not to. Um, and I'd encourage you to, to go ahead and, and uh, purchase yourself a few of the wraps, try them out, put them on a couple saddles, have yourself a spare because they will wear out. And um, if you got any questions on the install side of it, we got a great install video, but don't hesitate to call us. Um, our office number is 210-823-0565, or my personal number you can call me on is 210-823-5386. And uh, we look forward to seeing your posts on Facebook about your winnings and your successes, rope savings, I'd like to hear about it all. Um, until then, we'll see you down the road.